Hi, I'm Paul Warren. And I'm Ryan Klein. And this is another episode of SEO is Dead and Other Lies. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. We're we're finding the time. We're making it happen with the podcast. I think the last time was a beautiful Saturday. Now it's this Sunday. Is, yeah, beautiful <laughs> Sunday. Um, at a late night, I have a, a one-year-old child. If anyone has a one-year-old child, then you already know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say anything else. But if you don't, sometimes they are just constantly sick all the time and they don't sleep through the night. So you don't sleep through the night. So that's just pretty much how it goes. Oh, I thought you were saying you were up late because they're already playing Fortnite and they just no, not go to sleep when you told that them would to. be really awesome because I could play video games with them. But instead of that, we just watched Miss Rachel for hours and hours, which oh, I'm familiar. Are you familiar? Yeah, I am so, familiar. It uh, is, that's a that's an odd YouTube that gets uh, what I imagine lot. hundreds of millions of views, yeah. which is just so out there for me. My son would definitely, if given the choice between saving me and Miss Rachel, I would I'd be gone. And be off that cliff, you know. He'd he'd, he'd put two hands over Miss Rachel's and pull her up and drop me. So well, well, the goal is just make sure that that's, that decision is not the same one eighteen years from now. Yeah, where where will she be then? You know, <laughs> probably retired, living on a, in a mansion because she made so much money from YouTube. I I, I doubt it, but we yeah. one can hope. Well, we have a really interesting podcast today. A really good topic that's really more operational. So if if you're doing SEO and you're, you're trying to find link building resources, we're going to provide you with some insight of how we vet link builders. Really, Ryan's going to provide a lot of it because uh, the type of link building I do is a lot different because I focus on local. But uh, we're, we're going to kind of dive deep into how to vet a, a traditional link builder uh, service and what to look for and sort of, you know, what you've done, Ryan, to to vet them and work with good partners for, for years, right? Yeah, Absolutely. So I am very familiar with the process by proxy because it's not my responsibility, fortunately, at this point to really coordinate and keep tabs on it. But I'm very aware because of how important it is, obviously, to every campaign. And I, I think for our listeners, I think most of us are listening to this or, or knowing that uh, the majority of small to medium sized businesses cannot generate links on their own by just putting out content. So we're, we're always going to be going out and figuring out a way to be putting together our link building portfolio. And we still are in that place. Uh, we might touch on like digital PR a little bit too, because that's been become a lot more popular in the past past year. But it's expensive, and not everyone wants to pay seven thousand dollars for a handful of links. And that's why you have to diversify. And that's including, you know, DR and quality. And it's including I don't have thousands of dollars for links every single month to do this. So you have to diversify. You know the sources and yeah. actually the, the price per link. And let's just assume that you don't have time to really do this yourself. Because honestly, who got time for that, right? It's a very time-consuming process, finding link building opportunities. Or even if you're, I mean, I guess if it's automated and you're doing a bunch of like spammy stuff, that really doesn't take too long. Um, just depending on how many clients that you have or how many sites you're trying to build to. But I don't think those really work too well anymore. So, you know, these are more of your earned links, the, the quality ones that are actually, I think, going to boost your website long-term. So why don't we start like, how it always starts, which is how do you... Um, how do you initially get in contact with someone that's doing link building? Sure. That's always a great question. I think before I, I answer that, not to skirt around it, um, it's it's evolved. Remember, we used to go on like Black Hat World or or like uh oh yeah, you know, legit or these like SEO um marketplaces. It basically it used to be these fun packages and they'd say you're gonna get 100 from here, 100 from here, 100, 100 bookmarks, 100 social signals, a hundred of these. Uh two high DR, five low DR, uh, just all this stuff. And then they, you'd call it like, you know, the the grandpa package or like the sumo package. And Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was they, just like that for a long time. Um, they made a lot of money doing those too, if you would look at, because they, they were it, fun. The people that were buying them were always like requested examples all in like the forum threads. And it would be like 150 pages of like requesting samples and purchases and stuff. So they made a lot of money for a really long time. Uh, they probably still do. I wonder. I haven't been back. There's probably some. They're still out there. So what we're going to talk about today is is not that. We haven't done that in a while. There's no um, package as far as we're concerned. It's more the relationship. It's the vendor. And um, so to kind of catch up the speed really quickly, um, how, how to find them. Um, you know, I could talk about how that works. It's, it's a lot of more from what I've seen 
being a part of a community in these circles, like asking for referrals, like, oh, I, I know a guy. Um, a lot of this has taken place as where you'd imagine Eastern Europe, Southeast Asia, your, your, your yeah. typical places that 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 much hasn't changed. But the way that it, it's arranged and a little bit more exclusivity can happen. I think that there are some link builders that have made a name for themselves and don't have to like uh, <laughs> you know, go out and have to. Uh, I keep on going to the word whore. You're going to ed edit this out. <laughs> they don't have to whore themselves out <laughs> as much. You can keep it or take it or leave it. But that was a lot yeah. of what was happening for quite some time. And I don't see that happening as much. There's yeah. more exclusivity, a little bit more of a sense of pride in what they can offer. And so they don't just work with everyone. And it is a little bit more relationship building. Yeah. So, uh, so often do you, you're not really like getting cold emails and really responding to those anymore to give someone a occasionally I, because yeah. we, because we did find some that way. So if you've ever gotten those emails that are like, um, you know, sir, ma'am, madam, maybe <laughs> they're very sophisticated, <laughs> um, and they'll be transparent. So that's what the little bit of the difference has been before. They'll actually give you a, uh, like a snippet of their list and say like, I have access to, to these websites and here are the DRs and here are the prices. Mm -hmm. And that'll be like their foot in the door. And um, we did for the past couple of years, not, not so much in the past year because we already established our relationships. Let's say the past three years responded to a lot of them. You know, I would, I would get the email, I'd forward it to a, a more junior SEO. They'd follow up, they'd ask some questions. Yeah. That's a part of vetting. So we can either talk about vetting it or, or not in a moment, but you actually respond to them and um and try them out because it's it's pretty low stakes you know if you, you try to vendor and you see how it goes maybe you spend like three or five hundred dollars and just see see what they got yeah um, i i got uh i started working with the vendor at least i tried a vendor out from uh an instagram post and hmm. it was like we couldn't find anyone to build the links that we wanted so we just started doing it our own on our own and this is what we built as an agency afterwards to provide the service. Uh, and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'll check it out. I'll just see. So yeah, sometimes the advertisements, they can work in a positive. I don't know if like any of the cold emails I've ever gotten that are like, hello, sir. You know, anything. I don't think I've ever even responded. To I, those I have. They, it was, it's been, it's been yeah. a minute. <clears throat> and some, some are kind of fly by night, but some of them um, actually come through. So, so the reason Typically, that the emails, the cold emails to the to websites you're maybe familiar with, like your um, business insider, maybe I don't know about like Forbes, uh, Forbes, MSN, Yahoo kind of stuff. Yeah, let's just say that business insider is like one of the ones that's top of the list a lot. Um, the reason that they may be legit is the fact that when you pay them, they're turning around and paying another vendor to do it, so they're middlemaning. That's the reason that the majority of the time you may get the link because they're just up charging you 40%. Yeah. That's that's why they can do it and they do do it. This is because yeah, they can get it cheaper. Did you ever use like uh what's that? Oh, like Upwork. Have you ever found any like link building things no. on there? No, we didn't go on Upwork for link building if not because it wouldn't be legitimate. I'm sure it would be fine. And mm -hmm. in fact, the VA manager that we're using to build links they may go to Upwork. I doubt it because they're they're more frugal. They're they're not middleman. Like let's just put it that way. They're yeah. they're not going through channels to pay a twenty five percent premium on anything at this point. They're um. And then keep in mind when I'm saying I have a like a VA that does link building management. We're talking about someone that's in Eastern Europe that's managing people in the Philippines. Okay. So we're talking about that chain of command. Yeah. And all right. So I. I would do want to get into detail about all that, but yeah, you know, the topic at hand is like, you know, how do you initially find a, like a link building service? Uh, so ask or asking around, I think asking in uh, some appropriate forums or in Facebook groups or things like that um, can lead you to some pretty good vendors yeah. that everyone, people have already everyone used. Everyone has a guy. Yeah, oh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> everyone does. And I think we, I, I don't know if we're, we're going to provide our guys in this but we clearly have there we have guys uh that do it um guys and girl guys and gals yeah uh, but yeah i think word of mouth is, is a really really good way of doing it and then you know occasionally maybe some more traditional advertising if you see it uh, there's i think there's a, a point where the advertising is so 
like expensive like the operation is so professional that the links are going to be like insanely expensive mm. right like the hoth i think is one of those things and then um yeah page one power you can touch on the on the hoth because i don't necessarily want to poo poo on a organization that that's obviously obviously done a fantastic job like growing and developing over quite some time but i can imagine that, that the premium that's on their links must be intense yeah they, like four, they like got a lot of office percent. They got a lot of office space they got to pay for, you know, and employees and stuff like that. So it's, uh, there's an upcharge for sure. Uh, and I, I think page one power was one of the more uh, well-known actual ones that actual agencies that, that did this. And you had to, you were just paying by the hour. You weren't paying for like a number of links. Interesting. Yeah. Because they're so, doing outreach on, on your bath. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole different story. We, I think we've had podcasts about that. <laughs> yeah, so but, but doing the outreach on your behalf, and that's a whole other conversation right there for sure. Yeah, I think we're so, talking about paid opportunities. Very expensive, but I think what we're mostly what we're talking about here is like, hey, I have these connections. I'll get you links on these sites, right? Like, so right. you're we're talking about guaranteed links and optimize how you want mm -hmm. with with the keywords that you want and um and the anchor text and everything like that. I, I think that the the way to go, if you want to do do like go out and find the person, you'll have plenty of opportunities. If you're an SEO, you've gotten the emails. We don't have to talk about it. You could vet them and you can go through the the whole process, seeing which ones work and which ones don't. But if I were starting from scratch in house, I would go probably on Upwork to find um, an overseas SEO manager that already has like a network or connections, and I and I would, you know, be able to secure them. And then have them responsible for coordinating the relationships for links. That, and the reason reason for that is, which we've seen firsthand, their relationships when someone in that market is seeking links and negotiating, they're much more likely at scale to get a better price than if the, the link providers know they're working with Americans and know that they're going to pay more money. And yeah. that's just what, what it is. I think that's excellent advice and excellent direction is like find you know find someone on upwork or really i think upwork is, is a really legitimate website to do that right oh absolutely we more still so, use upwork for plenty sure more so than i don't is it conquer that is that something oh man I that's a remember. name i haven't heard in a while yeah Have you i forget there? i don't even um, remember that no it's been forever uh but more of your you know your fiber is your your niche websites no like no fiber uh, for this yeah nope. stay away from fiber for this yes all, all upcharge all that's, expensive so that's how you how you find good ones is you find someone that that already has those relationships that they manage basically and that's, they're the, they're the middle man. That would be my number one recommendation yeah. because yeah. they're going to go onto networks and then <laughs> the list that you get directly from the link builders overseas they're going to be 20 30 percent more expensive at least mm -hmm. and if you secure that SEO manager that's already embedded in that market they're going to get they're going to get a better price than you you ever could on your own and that's worth it's it's weight, you know, over time. Yeah. So let's say you've found a couple of opportunities to work with the vendor. Now, how are you going to, how are you vetting this vendor? As far as like the SEO manager or a vendor says, Hey, I can do X, Y, Z. Let's say they're like, you know, I'm a, I'm an SEO manager. They're not necessarily telling you who's doing the link building or whatever, but they have these connections. Uh, you're like, okay, send me some samples, right? Of, yeah. of what you've done. How are you looking at those samples and how are you evaluating working with that that person? Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Because yeah, doing this at scale, once you get rolling, if you don't do your due diligence, you could be you know, thousands of dollars in, months in, and you could have things that don't pass any value. So as as far as the links go, if you've listened to this podcast, there's things we're looking at. Um, if it's a reputable website, is it a press release? So that's like a big one. So people will say, hey, we can get you on MSN or Yahoo or, or or Forbes or even like all these places. And it's like 500 bucks. And they go, crap, I normally would have to pay like 2,500 for like a you know expert contribution. So yeah. a lot of times if you look at the links and, it, and it's like forward slash blah, 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 a bunch of crap. And then it's a press release. There's just like these like, parts of these websites that are even really managed by the website where people piggyback off of it to just distribute press releases and they're, they're semi worthless. And I, and I actually I've seen it more recently than I have in the past. So it depends what the format of content is and where its placement is on the website for sure. 
So you're not just looking at the metrics of the websites, you're looking at the type of website and you're looking at where the links themselves are, are put in there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We know that these websites, you, I don't even have to look it up. If I'm f very familiar with it and everyone is, I don't have to confirm the authority of Yahoo, right? So, <laughs> but I'm going to confirm the authority of some weird fourth tier subdirectory that I'm not familiar with. So where where's the place to avoid it's like if you saw this on a website you'd be like uh, from as an example you'd be like absolutely not like <laughs> so placement wise probably two things yeah a subdirectory that looks like it's it's so beyond clearly pay to play that it's like <laughs> i could even get it there and then <laughs> two there's actually something on the page what you won't see every day where it's like i don't some sort of placard at the top that's just like Yes, this is a Yahoo website, but Yahoo is not um, associated with this content. And this part of the website is is paid placement. Like something that makes it so clear that this is a pay to play. Yeah. It, it's going to be, the value is going to be diminished significantly. It's just really not going to be there in, in general. I think, you know, Google is pretty good at knowing what's a paid, what's a paid page, right? And even, I mean, anyone that's done SEO in the past, like, four or five months has seen Google crack down on things like that, especially oh, I mean, if it's what, unrelated to what you're doing as a website. Well, exactly. Yeah. Well, so I mean, there's really a checklist here and I'm basing it off of some links that um, one of our clients actually purchased and they weren't that expensive. So they didn't think too much of it, but even if you're paying $500 and they're like, Oh, it's not a big deal. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's worth zero. Mm -hmm. So like, don't even do it at all because you take the link and then you you search for it and it's not indexed by Google. So you have to check if the links are actually indexed that they're providing as examples. Another thing that was a huge red flag was the fact that it was linking out to other similar businesses. So they didn't even own like the, con like the content entirely. It was actually being used to link to several similar businesses. Yeah. So there's actually links to, to competitors. I think, um, one of the things that I, I've I've done in the past too, so I think for one is an index. That's a huge one, right? That's they'll they'll, the they'll one send you these examples. <laughs> uh, so if you don't know how to check if URL is indexed, you're not really you don't really know SEO very well, and we we're not going to cover that on this topic, like in, on this <laughs> on this episode. But it's a real basic thing. But anyways, uh, so you want to check that. And the other thing I do sometimes is I'll throw it in like the Wayback Machine and see if it's been crawled before and they have examples of it and then you can see what it looked like before. And sometimes they just switch out your link for like a different link or, you know, the history of the that's, page that's has been there point. for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just how often have they just kept updating that same page and then hoping it gets indexed again. And sometimes it's, you know, even though it is indexed, hasn't been crawled again for a really long time and they're just swapping out whatever, like the, the anchor text is for like that particular, like the URL in that anchor text and putting it to you. And it might not even be like re-indexed with like that link going to you. Right. So, uh, you know, those are things that you want to, you know, how often they're using that, how often they're switching links out on it, how often they're adding pages to those sites. Um, you know, especially if it's like they built, they built it themselves, their own like PBN, you know, is like all the content ridiculous, like not even related to each other, you know, like, like how many other clients for unrelated um types of businesses are they putting links on these sites and sometimes it can be just a lot so even though the metrics might look good you know like it has like a really solid da um it's like essentially useless because it's so off topic now like the entire website well those are definitely great points yeah especially talking about pbns and i know that people have become um especially critical about making the websites legit I think that the March update definitely did wipe out a bunch of like crappy PBNs. I think that's been confirmed by um, the cries of pain on a lot of <laughs> SEO forums and on Twitter and whatnot. But um, but it's true. I mean, I've seen links like land on a PBN and then the homepage had to, had the feed. So it basically had a feed of like the first five mm -hmm. and then it was cranking and it was like high value. And the second it got pushed down and started to go into the second page, the URL structure is just one of those crazy ones. So, you know, it was uh, being navigated to you from the root, but the second it goes second page, then it's like blog forward slash page forward slash month forward slash this. And then 
then it was really rarely crawled and then the value w was diminished. So um, that's the biggest like caveat with purchasing links is what value will it pass three months from now or 12 months from now? Are these people going to compromise it? Are they going to remove it? Are they going to alter it 12 months from now? So a big piece of advice definitely for this podcast is if you, when you purchase links and you go to that vendor, you have to have complete transparency and accountability, like indefinitely for every single link that they built. And you can use automation to confirm if they're still live mm -hmm. and, you know, tools to know if you like got the link or lost it, because the second you lose the link, they're on the hook. Like you didn't pay for the link to expire. You paid for it indefinitely. And so if, if they don't believe that, then you have to get in front of that before you even start working together. That's yeah. So be on the same page for that. I think is a really good, uh, a good thing to to go in with it. You know, like get the details uh, when you're talking to these people about like how long it's going to last there. You know, you're not, you're not renting the link, right? That's yeah, Fine. exactly. Yeah. And, and then before I forget one other just piece of advice is that if you go straight to a vendor and you, you know, they invoice you um, pay with, you have to pay with something that you can dispute it if it doesn't work out. So if you can't pay with like a credit card that has 90 days to dispute, don't work with them. Like we've, we've had people say they want to pay with like, you know, you can only pay with PayPal, but it was like, um, as a friend, I guess they're like, Oh yeah, I can't do it. As, I can't do it as a business because then I'll get taxed or I don't have a tax ID, blah, blah, blah. And, and I was like, I'm not, there's no way in hell I'm paying you as a friend. Cause I can't dispute, you can't dispute that. So yeah. we haven't worked with a, a vendor that looked promising because he wanted PayPal to pay as family or friend. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. That's also really, really good advice. So on the topic of payment, what is like a range for links that you think is like a normal to, amount to pay for? That's, like, that's always cost. a fun question. There's there's numbers that pop in my head. Um, there are a couple of good digital PR out there that will that'll make... Um, something out of nothing for lack of a better, you know, um, idiom there. Yeah. So they'll, they'll get you links in a few reputable places, but you're paying anywhere between six and $7,000. So that's not something I recommend too often, unless you want to like really impress a client, um, and go in the hole for a month or two. But, um, I mean, we're seeing that you can be on like local news, um, for like a thousand, 1500, or so, and that tends to be a legit rate. You know, you're still writing a decent article that's not chat GBT typically, but a lot of PBN stuff is going to be between like 150 and 200. Per and link, then, link. Yeah, for like yeah. A, a good one, low outbound links. Um, we're talking about ones that you can rest assured that they'll be there forever, even at that rate. Mm -hmm. um, so if I see stuff that's like 50 bucks and lower, I actually don't even trust it. I think it's too cheap. Um, and then if it's 300 and above for those types of links, very costly not inflated. Yeah. So that's like kind of a rule, rule of thumb, you know, people, people would fight us on that. And like, I know it's like subjective, but from, from what I've seen, I think that's kind of a fair, fair range at this time. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we covered some pretty good topics on this, uh, how to find it, how to vet it, uh, how to get your money back when it doesn't work and dispute yeah, it just right? with the credit card or yeah. business for paypal i mean i guess one, they, they kick and scream forget it it's one, just it's too risky one last thing to make sure that that you're doing too is you want to look at the results of it right so you want to make sure that you have keyword tracking set up for for these things that you're buying i mean hopefully you already do but you know if you, but if you don't and you're just randomly buying links uh how are you gonna know like if it's really like working or when it starts working or any of these things right so, you know, make sure that you're tracking uh, your rankings before you start these campaigns. And then that way you can see, you know, as things progress, as things get indexed, that's actually working and they're worth, they're, they're a vendor worth working with in the, in the future as well. And I think it's important right. to know vendors aren't always worth working with indefinitely. And this has happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you where you have someone that whatever links they're building, they're working really well. And then something happens maybe internally at that, you know, that business or like they have a whole bunch of sites get the indexed or whatever, and they have to start over. But, you know, you can't, 
just continually use a vendor and expect it to always work. And so you always have to be sort of checking the results from it because it happens pretty, pretty regularly. Yeah, you should have multiple vendors. That for sure. You can't have one and be like, you're the best. Let's go all in. Um, it's not uncommon for people, regardless how happy they are with one or two, they'll have four or six anyway. For sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You want to have a repertoire of uh, link building capabilities, right? So maybe even some people that all do like outreach on their own that you're paying them and then some people that will manage it, which it's not too hard to find people to do outreach for you. Um, there's a ton of websites and then, you know, you could go to Upwork and find someone very uh, cost efficiently to do that for you as well. Outreach is still a thing. 2024. It still is. It's still there. Not, not, not privy to the ulterior motives. Yeah. Um, so with that, though, I, I think we covered the topic pretty well. Um, and I just wanted to say thanks to all of our listeners. Uh, be sure to like, share, and, and subscribe anywhere that you listen to our podcast. If you have any questions for us or you'd like us to answer something, you know, in one of the episodes, you can reach out to us at seozandotherwise at gmail.com. Uh, but with that, thank you again so much for listening. I'm Paul Warren. And I'm Ryan Klein. And this has been another episode of SEO's Dead and Otherwise. Bye. Later.